Welcome back. This is the Farmer PG Podcast with your host, Bellogan. This episode features Staff Spotlights with Leave Me Alone and with Force Path. Follow that up with a question and answer segment, answering your questions submitted through the podcast library page. Let's jump into it. Welcome back to another special segment on the Farm RPG Podcast. I am Augie, and I do not have Belligan here to tease me and make fun of me, though he may edit himself in. Who knows? Um, today we have a staff spotlight with Leaf Me Alone, whom I will refer to as Leaf for my my own. Yeah. It's shorter. It's shorter. <laughs> No, no, it's fine. Everyone calls me Leaf, and I'm happy with that. But just your personal vendetta against my name, I think we'll get into in a bit. Yes, we will. Um, so, hi. Mm-hmm. Hello. It is hi. nighttime for me and also morning for you. So, good morning. Yeah. Yes, we, we do love, you know, living on a big old sphere. The, the sphere of times that are just concepts. Yeah, it's just t- much. Yeah. T- time is, is truly just a concept. and. You know, the sun is just somewhere else in the sky for you because your location. That's just how it is. Yeah, Anyways. Yeah, that, that is how it'd be. I mean, like, I'm kind of tired. So, I mean, like, if, if I could just pretend like it's nighttime for me, too, so it makes sense. <laughs> yeah, we're both kind of tired. So is it really any different? No. It's not really no, but, no, it's just the sun's just bullying me right now. It's fine. Yes. So... Hmm. Back to being on topic. Before we didn't, we got off topic before we even started. That's bad. <laughs> this is why I need Bell again. No, no um, it's fine. It's fine. So, how did you learn about from RPG, and how long have you been around playing, etc.? Um, you know, sometime last year, I was looking for new incremental games to play, and like occasionally, I'll do like a deep dive on the App Store and just like just see any game that kind of catches my eye and download a whole batch at once. So that's what I was doing around the middle of last year. Um, <clears throat> and um, I downloaded Farm RPG the same day as several other games. And, uh, to be honest, I don't think I actually tried it the same day. I think I might have put it off a little bit and, you know, kind of messed around with some of the other ones. But now Farm RPG is the only one of those uh, incremental idle games that I still play. So I think that says a lot. And... Um, I've been around for just over a year and I've been staff for most of this year since the start of this year. Yay. No, I, I, I yeah. like, so I so deeply relate to like the app store deep dives. <laughs> right? Like I feel like a lot of people who have said that they found it through the app store also found it through like the app store deep dives, like the really, like you got to put in something so specific that you're looking for for a game, and then you just you know you get to like yeah, page five or six if or I whatever. Could just be like, please, Mister Tim Cook, give me good games that aren't just straight up cash grabs, please and thank you. You can't do that. Please you just me, have to go put in like really specific keywords. Please give me games that aren't advertised on every other game and every other game. It's just <laughs> all ads for the other games. I don't want those games. I want anything else. <laughs> Exactly. Like the like the episodes games or like the the gossip harp like the oh the, my the, god those ads were are like everywhere. Wait, uh, honestly, I kind of live for those ads because they're so absurd. <laughs> they're so absurd and they, they have nothing to do with the game and ever. <clears throat> yeah, and there's a there's a whole genre of of um, ads where like someone will be doing something normal and then the zombies attack. You know, for all those zombie mm-hmm. defense games, and they're always they was they was really confusing. Like, oh, okay, this is some other game, and then boom, zombies, and they get confused. So, or or the ones where it's like it's people on a date, and then like you get electrocuted, and then like the the guy like runs away <laughs> because you have like dirt <laughs> on you, even though you were electrocuted. Oh God, I forgot about those. Okay, so we need so do we need to do another podcast just dissecting the state of advertising in mobile gaming? I mean that that could just be this podcast. We could just we could just talk about it at some point. Not right now because we should get yeah. back on topic. Um, <laughs> well, so, I think if, if the point of this of this particular you know uh, occasion is to get to know me, I have lots of like you know like tangential conversations to the main topic. So this is honestly just a better 
better this way. Is, um, this is on brand for both of us, it seems. Rambling. Yeah, it, is, it is, yeah. I'm a rambler. But there's a lot of information that needs to be shared, okay? So what yes. you know, we'll do? Yes. Okay, so if you only had... If you want to do more than a sentence, you can. If you had to describe Farm RPG to someone who's never heard of it, what would you say, like, to entice them? Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of us, the most common refrain is that, you know, it's uh, a, you know, a chat, a great community with a farming game attached. But there's, like, been so many um, updates and changes. And, like, we, we have so much more coming um, that I really think the game is coming into a zone as a fantasy RPG with your home base in a small farming community. I love that. I do love that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I am going to throw an extra question in there and say, uh, why, why are you still staff? Like, why, why do you volunteer your time <laughs> to help out? Why I do mean, you do it? I, um, I wanted to become staff to help the community um, because I... Like, I loved the place that I came to and I was just like, I, I want to make sure that, you know, other people can, you know, feel safe and comfy to just hang out, make friends and ask questions. That was the thing that I like, you know, when you just come from the rest of the internet, come to Farm RPG, a lot of people are just used to like people being really rude and standoffish when you ask like beginner questions. And that was something that immediately like, you know, that gave me comfort when I was new to Farm RPG, where people would just literally answer, you know, what seems like the dumbest question sincerely and with a smile. I'm like, you know what, that's, we need more of that. So I, I still believe that that's important. And then as the game grows, you know, that that's an even more important thing to like, you know, look out for and try and cultivate. So uh, I'm going to, you know, keep putting in my two cents where I can and try and uh, keep the community good. Quick shout out to RKM and the help chat book club who are re- right? the resident oh help, help the we resident have, help we chat have had RKM on first. Well, I RKM was busy. Yes. So yeah. Okay. So what happened was I I like added RKM in staff chat. I was like, hey, you busy tomorrow night? Just you know, just mm-hmm. you know, trying to trying to trying to you know. Do a hey, this is what time your your podcast. Yeah, you you, is. you were so slick. And you then, were so slick, like it's not even like anyone noticed or anything. And then I I think you I mean, you already knew. I don't know how you knew, but you knew. Yes. I think it's because I was pestering you yes. the day before about it. <laughs> um, yeah, that was, and that was a bit of sarcasm on my part. <laughs> and Leaf goes, "I'm not busy." <laughs> and so here we are. Our and so next. here we are. Yeah. <laughs> we will get you our cam okay um, okay so yeah. it's just you know like we we have to like try and make this go smoothly so we don't scare off the rest of staff i it, it's fine they they because they, there's still I, a couple I, of staff members that haven't been snared in your trap they will be i will get i will get <laughs> ffff or i will i will i will get you one day I, I, on I'm this like, podcast i want <laughs> I know, but I feel so silly when I do it, well, and I and I, mean, I also I'm not time, sure like, are, like, I can't to- I can't hear it like what like what it's going to sound, and I don't want it to just sound like I'm breathing heavy into the mic either. <laughs> no, I mean I think just like like when not for jokes, I think I just refer to him as F because it's easier. Um, but every once in a while, I'll see his name in chat, and just be like, <sighs> said something. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. We love this. Okay, now it's time for the question that everyone, I don't know if it's everyone or if it's really just me. Why? I'm, I'm not even going to ask the question. Why is there a typo in your username? I'm just going to ask that's the question this time. Why is there a typo? You have to be a good host. That's not the question. I never said I was a good host. I that's said not- I was the host. Why is there a typo? More than anything. More than anything, this is the reason I'm here right now. I know this. Okay, so how about I just tell the, the, the short, tiny story, and then, you know, we see how you feel afterwards. All right. Okay, it's seriously not that deep. I was playing Snake EO. You know this game? The, the Snake.io? Like snake. Yes. 
Okay. Where well, yeah, where you have the thing and then you have to eat the little yeah, things to the, get bigger the same and then rules as like snake on the phone, but it's like multiplayer and chaotic. That's the yes. TLDR of that game. So anyway, I every once in a while I play it just for funsies. And this one particular day I was having a really terrible luck and kept dying really quickly. And so I just felt everyone was being mean. And I just wanted them to all to just leave me alone. And that's how I ended up spelling it. That's it. But why have you never fixed it? But it's not a fix. That's how I felt like spelling it. And that's how it appealed to me. So there's no real reason that you have the, the typo. It's mm, just because No, that's-, that's just like when I wanted everyone to leave me alone, that was the way I felt like spelling it that day, how many ever years ago. And I just was like, I like that spelling. I'm sticking with it. Well, I think the way that you pronounced it too, like just now, like say it again. Mm-hmm. I just want everyone to leave me alone. Yeah, because you, you, even the way you said it was alone, like, oh, I still. Right. Go, okay. okay, okay. So okay. for like a full, it was like, I think th- like three full weeks, I was misspelling your username everywhere. And I didn't know it. Okay. And like in the library pages and uh, everything. Okay. Like, because I, you know, like, okay. like, like <laughs> you know, it's all fixed now, but like, even like when I was like mentioning you in chat, I was just making the typo. And then one day, mm-hmm. like, I don't remember if I noticed it or if someone pointed it out to me, but I was like, wait, I, I, I like, I got mad because <laughs> I got, I went that long and I wasn't corrected. Okay. Okay. So, okay. So what we what we're learning is that there's nothing wrong with my name. It's just um, you decided not typo. to read, and then decided uh, you decided not to read the whole name, and then you decided to make that my problem. <laughs> is that what well, we're learning? No, my brain like auto corrected. I think I read it, and my brain auto corrected. Yeah, I mean that does happen because you know you know it's the internet and people change the spellings of things all the time but eventually you know we reread it and then we just kind of like oh okay i was wrong and i don't know possibly move on not keep a vendetta for a whole year something like well, that. well no i don't think i was i think you you were the one that was wrong the typo how was it but was, now it was but now we know was, now we know i wasn't wrong it was just a, it was essentially a creative decision okay whatever you say okay would you tell an artist that they're wrong for choosing that color just because you don't like it? If the artist spelled their name wrong, maybe. I didn't spell it wrong. I just didn't spell it the way you were expecting. <laughs> if the artist chose lavender but put like a, the letter like U in there somewhere, I'd probably be like, yeah, that's not right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. We know you're a person of many opinions, so I'm not really going to try and, you know, change a fundamental part of you that's just that's the beginning and the end of the story and so when i was making a discord account for the first time last year i honestly don't know how i wasn't on it before um i remembered that silly little username made it that when i joined farm rpg i made it that and here we are everyone calls me leaf you know you're just leaf yes so besides farm rpg what are some other hobbies that you have if there's not a lot of other games that you currently play what do you do for funsies? Yeah, I I try to, um, you know, give myself like a kind of reality check, you know, go touch grass sometimes. Um, I really think that we all need that to a certain degree. Um, so I try and, um, you know, get into a little bit of like painting and small crafts uh, every once in a while, like when I have the, you know, mental energy for it. But there are some games I, I play even now, like um, Kirby and the... I've always forgotten the end of it. What is the name of that Kirby game that I'm obsessed is with? Is it the the I new one? Kingdom? Yes. The new Kirby, Kirby and the Forgotten Land. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. I keep meaning to finish that game and I I just play like one level and then get distracted. So I do love that game, but I haven't finished it. <laughs> and I don't this almost doesn't count as a game, but um I really, really enjoy GeoGuessr. Um I don't which even, is a game is that GeoGuessr? Drops it's it's <laughs> it, I get, you get dropped onto a particular Google Maps page, 
Um, and you have to move around using the Google Maps controls to try and figure out where in the world are you? That sounds fun. Maybe I'll try that. That's my. It sounds relaxing it's in terrifying. such a chaotic way. I have, I have no well, sense I mean, of anything with geography at all. Like, it's bad. It's really bad. <laughs> I, I gotta try it. You know, you can, you can, you, back when it was like really popping off, you could watch some people who were very, very good at it play that were basically like wizards. And you can also watch some people that are, um, not geographically gifted play. And so it's, it's an experience no matter what skill level the player has. I'm gonna try it. Yeah, you really should. I just made an account. Um, but I'm not gonna <laughs> do it right now. Um, Okay, okay. So next yeah, let's not get question. entirely off topic yeah. where we just start plugging completely different game. <laughs> yes. Um, so what's something that, you know, as a staff member, we have a kind like we kind of have a different shine on a lot of different things in general about, you know, the game, what whatnot. What's something that you wish that the community just knew? I mean, you know what? It's it's gonna and no matter how I try to say it, it's going to sound insincere, but the mods really are out here trying their best. <laughs> I honestly have hardly seen a mod team on the internet that like so consistently is just like full of good intentions and just, and honestly, no drama. If anyone was hoping for a tea time where we, you know, spill tea about each other, that's just not happening because there's nothing there, you know? So even though sometimes like, it might seem that like, oh, there aren't any mods in chat or, you know, maybe there's no one paying attention. There is. And chances are, you know, we're working with each other to try and um, do something. So I, I don't know. There's just this kind of weird perception that, you know, we're kind of all there or we're not there. And that's really not the case. Yeah. I mean, and even if there is like, like a moment where we are not seeing a situation that happens, like if, you know, you know, if messages are flagged, yeah, sometimes we're do it, we, yeah, we will, we will deal with it once, once we're able to, you know, and it may not be that instant, yeah, yeah. you know, that instant chat wipe and, you know, you know, it's like, I want to, I, 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 I want to apologize for that. But at the same time, like we're only humans. We are a small team of people who, you know, like we are volunteers and we do our best. And we, you know, we'll, we do deal with things after the fact if, you know. You know, I had forgotten about that. There is this kind of perception that like, oh, you know, if, if, if no one, you know, yells at me about it within 10 minutes, I got away with it. Like, no, it's, it's all still there and it still wasn't appropriate. Just give us a second. Yeah. Ugh. But yeah, I have had some confusion from people like, oh, you know, well, you didn't say anything then. Okay. Was it right then? Was it right now? No. Same same yeah, it, does, it doesn't matter. You know, I'll like if I look at the flag logs and there's someone with like a message with like twelve flags, like I'm gonna I'm gonna copy and paste it in a message to them and be like, here's a chat ban for this. Was it twelve hours ago? Absolutely, yes, it was. Here you go. Because this is when I'm seeing it, and you know, it just it be like that sometimes. Also, like I know we don't. I think maybe like some of the older players might have gotten used to um, seeing Firestream and chat a lot more often. Um, but, you know, <laughs> Mr. Stream, if I may, is uh, honestly working as hard as ever, always plugging away at absolutely something. He's just kind of, you know, in his workshop tinkering away and we elves are out here just directing traffic. Yeah. Um, yeah. Fire, Firestream or as you said, Mr. Stream. Mr. Fire. He's he he is definitely good people. And he mm -hmm. like he kind of like and it's like a, it's a necessary thing, but like we are we are a buffer for him. Because like mm -hmm. there's so many people that play and he's he is a one singular human being. Or or five coders in a trench coat. You know, that's too that's another discussion. But you know, he has us. He, like our purpose and existence, you know, aside from helping with, you know, with quests and, you know, other types of things is, you know, we, we are like the community people. We talk yeah. to the community yeah, yeah. and kind of, you know, feed out updates and like, 
you know, answer like we answer the update questions. He does the updates and then puts it in updates mm-hmm. and we we send the updates link in chat. That's really what we do. Um and we make library pages. But yes, he you know, he is very, very active, a lot more often than people think. He just doesn't mm-hmm. talk in the chats very often. And if you do see him in chat, don't be mean. Be nice. Tell him you appreciate him. And send you him, know, don't him some if he doesn't reply to you. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. Oh, I um I I'm often just, get I'm left say, I get left on red. Person. I get left on red. I talk a lot and I know how I am. I don't take it personally, neither should you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, he's 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 he's, he's out there trying his best. Um, but no, speaking of the library, like I um I don't feel like I've been active in the library updates as I would like to be, but um, you know, um between you and I, we have some pretty iconic library pages. Well, so yeah, so so Leaf actually was the one that originally made how to talk to your mods about uh responsible investments. <laughs> and I just like I instantly I this up that, for ages. This I don't know what it I think that that page was really what sparked my my enthusiasm because i saw that page and i was like wait and i and i was like wait but we should be responsible and i just kind of i like stole i stole the page from leaf and like i i almost want to apologize but i can't you know honestly but like you know not to cast you as you know the sole villain here like you know when i first posted that link in staff chat everyone was memeing on it and that was fine there were several edits made but then just the you know the cherry on top was then was when you i think i think maybe you were busy and you finally had a chance to sit down and you sat down with that page for 20 minutes and we've never looked back <laughs> no so every, every letter individually you made I gifts. Made, I mean, no, nothing can yeah. be so and then, and then, you know, if you look at it on mobile, I made it just big enough so that it slightly yeah. doesn't fit right on the screen. That's that's intentional. Yeah. yeah. No, no, I, I, I've i always known that. Um, and but then yeah, from I that, honestly did want to figure out how to talk to our mods about responsible leaf spins, at, <laughs> leaf wheel spins, and it was completely taken over. Yes, and then... Um, that page actually was, you know, now, now the, the merit badge is responsible wheel spinner and, but no, I like strong armed, <laughs> like fire team, we need a wheel badge. Can we please call it the responsible wheel spinner? And I just like, I kept like throwing it. I just, sometimes I just have statements and I, and I throw them at the wall, hoping that they stick. Usually they don't, but sometimes, sometimes they do. And when they do, it's so, so good. <laughs> so now we have the responsible wheel spinner badge. and. At the time of recording, I am over 9,000 spins. <laughs> I am the most responsible wheel spinner. This all backfired spinner. so sorely. I wanted to teach our mods how to be responsible wheel spinners, not wheel spinners. And items. I am. I am the most responsible. Yeah. No, you, will, you know, you made a title for yourself. So you can point to that badge and be like, hey, Leaf, don't worry about me. Look at me. I'm officially a responsible wheel spinner. I'm the most responsible, actually. That's my plan I would all be along. deeply worried. Uh huh. Uh huh. Well, I am slowly chipping away that merit badge because you know I would like. You're to, not as responsible. You know, get warmer. You know there is a companion page to that page, and I've just never gotten around to giving a certain flair that maybe I really should um, revitalize. That's your homework to do in the next. <laughs> I don't know. Amount of time. Oh, good. Oh, good. I get teacher voice. Love it. Love that for me. Love that for you. Okay. <laughs> What's it? Give us an interesting fact. Back on topic. I have no idea. I mean, this, this, I feel like I feel like I barely exist. I was um was talking to someone about this before I came on, and the suggestion was to talk about my semi irrational fear of. Like if I'm out in public, of being pooped on by a bird and not noticing, and not notice, how would you? I mean, how would you not notice though? You would notice. You would know. Well, you would feel. You. I wouldn't. No. No. Like, what if it if it was like a like little like droplet? Anyway, that's that's as good as no, um. I pro- like three no, brain I pro- cells could come up with. 
No, listen, I, I understand the concept of that, but I just want to assure you, like you would know, you would, you would feel it. You would feel it happen. I promise. I promise you would know. Are you, see, you see, you're the representative of the birds around here. I, that feels almost like a threat. I mean, I've, I've been in my car, like parked and, you know, have had, you know, a bird decide that's the place that they want to go. And I heard it hit my hmm. car and I was angry about it's it. Flat. Yeah, it was, it was icky. It's icky and gross. You would know. I mean, like, I, okay, okay. I mean, like, I'm a really big fan of cats. Um, so maybe I'm just being, like, targeted for, like, you know, psychological warfare because of that, because of my affiliation. That could be true. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's a distinct possibility. I mean, another interesting fact could be, like, you know, what, what country do you reside in? Oh, currently? well, that's easy, Australia. Okay. Are you and Novel Corsu's next door neighbors? Pretty much, yeah. Oh, God, I, I got to go return this butter now. <laughs> <laughs> Just to well, clarify, like that is a joke. <laughs> well, no, it's it's interesting because, like, no, Velcro, like, his, his Australian accent is, like, very, very, like, defined. Mm-hmm. And you're just like, I could, like, right, I could talk I, a little bit, but you're, like, it's not as defined. And I always, I always find that so interesting with, like, just people in general, like, people that are that are in other countries that live in other countries that have been there for for a while or whatever and just like the even just you know moving down like moving like i live in the south now and like there's people that have lived there here their whole lives and they don't have any sort of like southern twang Mm. that's just an Mm. interesting thing that interests me that's interesting to me well a lot of uh australia is in a lot of ways like america but upside down so, like, the northernmost part of Australia is most comparable to the American South. And then the southern parts of Australia have much cooler temperatures and bigger cities. Um, and, well, I mean, it's not, ex- it's not an exact parallel, obviously. There's lots of large cities in the south of the U.S. But, but um, so the further south you get in Australia, the uh, sort of softer someone's a shy and accent's likely, likely to be. Interesting. See, now that's in- that is mm. an interesting thing. Okay, glad I could help. <laughs> Yay. Is there anything else that you'd like to discuss on this very, very intriguing staff spotlight filled with a lot of random facts that are not necessarily directly related to the staff spotlight? No, but I mean, I think we covered like a lot of important things. Like we, there's no way that, you know, we could get through this without talking about your feelings about my name and, um, you know, the we wheel. We had to talk so, about the wheel. Really like we, we had to talk about the wheel. Yeah, yeah. And, so, and everything um, else you know, that I'm we talked hard. about had to be discussed. And just about... Just, <laughs> yeah honestly i'm gonna be as interested as anyone to see how this all uh shook out in the end like what what rambling paths did our brains follow um no i'm i wish i had i, I could think of more things to say right now but i um i can't i'm sure i'll be kicking myself in like 10 minutes of like oh dang that was a good thing to talk to on you we can always do another podcast segment in the future that is always an option if you think of more things mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. Well, I will let you know. Most responsible okay. wheel spinner. Creator of the responsible wheel spinner. Frank, <laughs> you are your Frankenstein, Frankenstein's monster. <laughs> oh, God. I always knew I was going to be a mad scientist. I just didn't think it was going to be this early. <laughs> okay. If you, if you see Leaf in chat, make sure to send them some fish. Just because. Just I mean, or you could just send me leaves like that's literally my whole name that would be cute and fun and mildly useful i thought you didn't want leaves because it's leave me alone or well you know I'll, I'll figure it out i wanted more than fish okay well thank you for joining <laughs> <laughs> thank you for having me and leading us down whatever paths we wandered down this rabbit hole of things and discussions yeah yeah bye bye welcome back to we live we are live yep, there's my intro. here there's the intro well, that's it that's it welcome hi welcome back to the the far more pitchy podcast as always i'm your host bell again 
Uh, as always, here's Augie to interrupt me in every every opportunity possible. Every time I have to, I must. You won't edit those out. Sometimes I edit it out, so it sounds like we aren't interrupting each other, but not most this of time. Us it. Not this time. And we're doing something we haven't done for a while. We are doing a staff spotlight today. And this is a staff member who was originally going to be the very, very first interview we ever did on the podcast. Didn't quite work out because uh, Augie jumped in after that. But today we are talking to Force Path. Hello. <laughs> Hi, I Force Path. All right. I'm not deserving of such fanfare, but thank you very kindly. So snack path, we're going to go over our standard questionnaire for you. Are we really, are we going to path, are we going to path it up the whole time? It's, it's, it's snow path. That's what it oh, is. No. It's salt path. <laughs> oh no. Okay. We have the list. I have the list open. Oh no. <laughs> Elegan sent it to me like a couple hours ago. Like some of the early paths that, that people kind of started putting in there. It's so what it is. What it is. Oh, so. Boy. Cowpath, how did you learn about Farm RPG in the first place? Oh, uh, that's actually a pretty simple question. Uh, I played Titan Conquest. I was a moderator um, or s- staffer. I don't know what we, what are we, Vanguard. There we go. Vanguard. And, yep. <laughs> pulling out of the old brain there. I started playing Titan Conquest in um, June or July of 2020, I believe. Um, got really into what. Firestream was doing there, and then Farm RPG came out of that, and uh, I helped him a little bit in the alpha, not nearly as much as you did, Bell. I mean, you were you were the alpha king, and uh, at once Firestream got through the initial release, I kind of signed off for a little bit, and then came back and played for quite a while, and then I uh, needed to take another break. Breaks are okay. I have taken multiple year breaks from <laughs> Titan Conquest oh, man. and Destiny RPG in that in in the past. It's it's all my, right. Uh, Boomer, my wrist. Encouraged. I think I think I can still pop my wrist on command from the amount of clicking I did in Titan Conquest. So I've definitely and, uh, been in there. Season three opened up not too long ago. If you didn't know. Yeah, I I keep a little bit of track of Titan Conquest. Uh, I'm still in a Discord with some of the old Phase homies, uh, but I haven't really spent the time on the game since coming over from RPG. Purple Tunnel Quest Path. (laughs) Purple Tunnel Path. So if you only had one sentence, how would you describe the game? Um, I would describe it as an idle clicker it gets way optimized with a really nice community. I wish that you were the first response. I like that. I, w- I wish you were the first interview because I set the bar. Like the bar was like six feet under with my with my. It's very low. <laughs> it was it was bad. It was really bad. Listen to the first episode if you want to know. All right, I will endeavor to find time to do that. But you know, critical role is tonight, so maybe not tonight. You know, yeah, we asked, you know, we asked for a sentence and we got an incoherent uh, essay with multiple paragraphs. It was good. Well, if it's a run on sentence, it's still a sentence. Technically, I don't think I stopped speaking right. the whole time, though. So. <laughs> it was it was a great crash course in editing for me. We'll put it that way. <laughs> That's awesome. So maybe you could talk to us a little bit about the spoiler path and, and where that came from in the history of that. Sure. Um, Bell, you, you know, all this history, but well, we'll go back. Uh, quests came out, uh, in the game a little bit into the beta. Um, and I believe Firestream was kind of heading that up and then you and Tenfu kind of jumped in. Um, and for a while it was you guys. And then I don't know if you recall, if you guys recall, recall Pirate Cove. So it was the first quest I ever wrote. Um, really pushing the <laughs> envelope for the early part of the game. Uh, and outside of that, uh, because the quest was so big and the requirements were so much bigger than anything that had existed in the game, um, a chat was spun up uh, because everyone was constantly um, everyone was constantly putting the, the quest in general chat. And, you know, Bell, I think you remember general chat at one point was was bonkers. I mean, we're talking like, it was Five the only messages chat. a second for 
hours. There were hours and hours. We would just have five messages a second. Um, and you know, we would have copy pastas and all that stuff. And, uh, the spoilers chat was implemented and I couldn't tell you a date anymore. Um, and I was, uh, I was pretty strict early on about people not spoiling the quest for people. And, uh, I believe that is where spoiler path came from because I would, I would unfortunately sometimes be a little heavy handed with telling people to get out. Uh, and I believe that's, I, th I believe that's the origin, uh, sometime around the end of pirate cove. That's awesome. What about, uh, uh what about snack path? Oh, well, Augie, you created snack path, but what's the origin? You know, <laughs> honestly, I couldn't tell you. I think that's just that's just an Augie original. Uh, Snack Path, Snack Path came up from the uh, the one Discord that we were in, the FRPG Discord, and uh, I think I think you made a library page early on, and it just stuck. Uh, despite my protestations and ignoring, I could not get rid of the moniker. And uh, sometimes you either uh, you push away or you lean into the skid, and eventually I just lean into the skid. And what else were you going to do? You could change your <laughs> username. I I have been told I should change my username to Snack Path. Um, currently, I I don't I don't see that in my near future. Unfortunate. I mean the the long long term five year plan. Sure, you know, um, big fear is losing my name uh, in Titan Conquest. I don't know. Do you remember the Cult of Ease, Belligan? Vaguely, maybe. Yeah, Cult of Ease started by Zers, and oh, I feel so uh, bad. Zers, I remember. Yes, it was Zers and one other guy, and I believe Cosmic was even in on the Cult of Ease. And uh, I remember changing my name to Force Path with three O's. And someone stole Force Path. I had to beg and plead. Uh, to get that name back, and I don't, uh, I don't really want to do that again. Well, it's easy here. So if we, yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean, we can, here. we can just, <laughs> we can just, we can make sure that your name doesn't get stolen. Change it for them. Name yeah. changes weren't a thing in TC at the time. You could name change you know every thirty days, but there were no like moderator name changes. So if you changed it, it was it was your risk. So if we go back to the original Force Path name, where did that come from? Oh gosh! Uh, so that's been a handle of mine for uh, like I don't know how old am I? About thirty years. Uh, this came from a Star Wars book. Uh, there was a there was a Star Wars um, youth horror story. So it was like before the young adult section, but after elementary, and there was um, there was a ghost in the computer. And he called himself Path of the Force. And I remember him tempting the Jedi in that. And I thought it was such a cool name. Uh, and Force Path was spun out of that. And I've used other handles throughout the years, but Force Path has just kind of stuck with me the whole time. I like, I like Snack that, Path. That, that uh, puts it about... <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say that that puts uh, the age of Force Path about the about the same age as Belligan in, the, in that neighborhood. Yeah, it was in the early to mid-90s. So I think we're... Yeah. We're kind of aligned in that area. Hi. I don't remember the name of that book series, though. I probably ought to look that up sometime. It's before before Augie was even born. <laughs> I, I have, yeah. Augie's what, yeah. like uh, 18, 20? I can rent a, I can rent a car. <laughs> Do you need to be... Do you really need to be 18 for that, or am I... Am I, just I can rent a, no, I can rent a car without the really high premium. Oh, very nice. You'll have to forgive me. I'm looking to see if I can find this book. Was it Legacy it of like the it Force? Require... It might be Legacy of the Force. Legacy of the Force. No, no, that's an Aaron Alston book. Uh, that whole series, I believe, is the Yuzen Vong series. Yeah, that's NJO. So it was a lot before that. I'll find it, though. Uh, maybe send it to one of you guys. I'm also now looking. <laughs> and we're waiting because it's your turn to ask a question. Too. I think it's your turn to ask questions. Oh, God. Now you, you two, you two, you're also, you're, you're also going to remind me when it's my turn. Ugh. Hey, Ollie, um, I think it's your turn. Okay. What other games do you play? What are you doing? 
Or your hobbies. Oh. Uh, do you want games only, or are we just getting big on the hobbies here? Whatever you want to say. This is your spotlight. Sure. Um, I recently was a big Lost Ark fan, um, but found the grind to be a little too intense. Um, I regularly boot up Forza to play Forza. I used to stream it. Um, Path of Exile. Um, I really enjoy, if you can't tell, persistent worlds um, with power growth. Um, actually, I've been really vibing Vampire Survivors in 20 minutes until dawn. Uh, two of the uh, kind of that new roguelite, roguelike um, timer based games. Been been a big fan of those. Um, I started playing with some of my old Lost Ark friends. Uh, seven minutes or seven days to die, um, modded seven days to die server. So uh, I play all over the place. Uh, I love to play games. I just uh, I just finished two books as well: the uh, Kings of the Wild. And uh, Bloody Rose, which is a part of the band series um, by Nicholas Eamon, and found those to be really, really enjoyable. So uh, when I have time, which is typically after 39 o'clock EST, I just try to cram as many of those things into a two to three hour block as I can. Yeah, so, I play Farm RPG, too. I don't know if anyone knew that. Occasionally. We, uh, we found out. The other night, and this will come out before uh, before the episode does, so spoilers a little bit. We found out that you know how to play D&D as well. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I do. I uh, used to be a DM, and uh, I'm currently in a campaign with some friends that I've known uh, via the internet for about 15 years. I'm playing a rogue uh, who um, doesn't have an identity. The only thing he likes to do is impersonate other people. Uh, and it's a lot of fun. Um, I'm really, really into role playing. Uh, I don't know that I love combat as much as I enjoy really digging into a character. Uh, so that has been a newer campaign. Uh, I think we've been doing that for four months now. So, but D and D has been a part of my life since. T- um, was that AD and D? It was probably AD and D back when Baldur's Gate was popular. Back with yeah, second edition. Yeah, TSR days. Yeah. yeah. Oh man. I'm aging so, myself in this interview. I know it. I, I'm just going to lean into the skid. We're yeah, we're both there No, So so uh, Milk Bark will be be very jealous. But uh, in an upcoming episode, probably a couple weeks from when this interview gets released, uh, Force Path does make a, a guest appearance on D and D on the Farm RPG. It was a lot of fun. I, I had wanted to do a little bit more with it, but it was a sort of a last minute thing. I didn't have a, a lot of preparation. But you had about thirty seconds. <laughs> About, yeah, 30 about 30 seconds, seconds. <laughs> like get over here do this now <laughs> <laughs> but it was a lot of fun uh it was something i i definitely enjoyed and don't mind making guest appearances in and uh next time i'll have you know character voices ready but that's something i'm talented at on the fly was it star wars galaxy of fear it might be i'd have to look it up you're still <laughs> looking this up augie i yeah she's obsessed it won't it won't uh, go away till she finds the answer Galaxy. 1997. Yeah. Hmm. Ghost of the Jedi. It might. It might be. It looks kind of yeah, familiar. For, I'm, a mysterious figure called Force Flow. It's very possible my young self has completely misremembered, but it, I do think it might be Galaxy. I found I it. Have to I have to look I into f- it. I found look it. You. Well done. I did it. <laughs> you did it. Oh me. And now it's Belligan's turn. It is my turn. Yeah. All right. If there's anything that you wish that the Farm RPG community knew as a whole, could be something game related <laughs> or anything else in life in general, what would that be? Uh knew about me? No, something that the that you wish the Farm RPG community knew, period. New period. Um right. Oh, that's a tough question. Uh this is a little bit more difficult because I just came back. Um, my gut tells me the thing I wish people knew is that, um, hmm, the mods of farm RPG are really passionate. Um, and it's tough sometimes to not be jaded. Uh, but I think every single one of them wants to be friends with people and get to know people. Um, and the community is what I think has made farm RPG for a lot of people. So, um, sometimes that, sometimes that clash uh and the uh the dichotomy between the players and the moderators uh sometimes gets a little bit overstated and i found 
personally, that was really challenging for me. Uh, sometimes I can be a little stubborn headed, uh, don't laugh. And, uh, sometimes I can be maybe a little too forgiving. So finding a good balance is, is important, um, as a player of farm RPG to understand that I think everyone just wants to be friends for the most part. There's always bad actors, but, uh, I do, I do wish people would think about the uh, human on the other side of the computer more often. I, I agree. It's not always fun. You know, we don't, we don't like to be the bad guy, even for people that are friends, but sometimes we do have to be if said friends are doing things that uh, we need them to not do. Sometimes. Yeah, that's the case. And I will say, I, I feel like, and I could be wrong, but I feel like having the podcast and putting a, a voice and a personality behind the usernames helped a lot with, uh, you know, treating people like they're people rather than uh, random anonymous bots. I would say yeah, I definitely coming back. I've noticed maybe a little less overall hostility. I mean, I've seen it still, um, but in general, spoilers chat is where I like to hang out uh, just because I like shooting and just chatting. And it's not quite as intense or toxic as I remember it. And that has been a joy to experience. So. Yeah, it, it really has become a, an easier place for us to be able to also goof off and have fun. <clears throat> oh, it's me now. Um, I'm going to change this. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm going to change this question. Give us three interesting facts about yourself. Not just one. You need to give us three. 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 Uh, what defines interesting? I don't, I don't really think I'm that interesting. Um, well, that's the wrong answer. That's the only wrong answer. So you failed. Try again. Oh, the only wrong answer. I love that. Um, I have been struck by lightning, uh, which was a unique experience. Um, are, you, are you okay? Let's see here. Yeah. Can you elaborate? Uh, I was, um, so I, I'm trumping it up. Uh, I was playing. Uh, I was playing games in the basement, and uh, lightning struck our house, and the electricity. Um the electrical charge from the lightning strike uh, was not grounded. Um, and so it surged our entire home. Um, I happened to be holding on to an electronic at the time um, and was knocked backwards about 10 to 15 feet. Uh, so um, that was, uh, I think they fixed the house after that. <laughs> I, hope, I, I would hope so. Is it the same house that you're currently so. in? No, 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 no. That was a long time ago. Is, this house to, is your new house grounded? Find my, is my new house grounded? As far as I know, I haven't been... You should check. We've ever Don't had any lighting issues here. <laughs> I wish I could find my Titan Conquest interview. I think I wrote down three interesting things there. Um, I uh, Otherwise, you know, I play an instrument. Uh, I play guitar and bass guitar. Um, I like to, like to write music on occasion. Uh, one of my... Original plans for quest writing was to um, sing some songs in Farm RPG, but uh, just kind of never happened. You and Bell need, and, to, uh, need to last... get together. What's that? You and Bell need to get together about that. Bell, Bell's amazing. Um, I've not known. Um, Bell is one of the more talented people that I've met on the internet. I've seen him do a lot of things, and I'm like, man, I wish I could do that. Um, well, I disagree, but thank you. No. Uh last interesting fact, I have a kid, I guess. Um I love my daughter. She's two and two and a half years old. And uh she's light of my world. Uh love her, love my wife, and uh just uh just trying to find peace in this world and help her grow up to be uh an awesome person. She's and, very uh, cute. This was a little one out of the blue. Sorry, I don't I don't uh always think quickly. So in your fighting conquest interview three facts where you hate eggs. You can only eat them when they're baked and other things and eggs True. are vile. Nice. Good one. Yeah. And what was the eggs. last one? Eggs are vile. The eggs are vile. What else did I put? That's what's, what you yeah. had under, uh, what's the rest facts. of the, what's the rest? What, wait, what's the rest of this Titan conquest interview? Oh my goodness. Don't, right, don't I'm, do it. Bell. Don't do it. Bell. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna send the link over on discord. All right. I have to log into Titan Conquest and go to the forums and reread it. I don't know if you can look at these forums with, with or not without being logged in. We'll find out here. Oh, I mean, I know my, I have, I know my. I cannot. Uh, yeah. uh, oh, wait. 
my messages. My show it. I can. I can open it. Cool. <laughs> can you really? Oh my gosh. Your best <laughs> rather, than your reading, be- rather than reading everything. Your best not, rage uh, moments. <laughs> Oh my goodness! I don't. <laughs> let's not recall some of these things. <laughs> let's just say to our listeners: if you'd like to learn more about Force Path, log into Titan Conquest under their community oh, forums no. under interviews. You might be able to find one about Force Path. There you go. <laughs> Sorry, Titan Conquest plug again. Nice uh, for the for the day. Yeah. Well, let's let's wrap this up. We will say whether you call him Snack Path, Force Path, Cook Path, Spoiler Path, Pizza Path, or Awar Path, all the paths. Strange Gen <laughs> Thank Path. Thank you for finally coming on the show <laughs> and letting us get to know you a bit. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry it took so long. All that matters is you're here now. You're here now. You may have seen it advertised prior in the chat announcements or you've heard us call out and ask on the podcast or if you go to the podcast library page you'll notice there is a section where users can submit their very own questions for us to answer and we've got a nice panel here to answer some of these questions for this episode uh as always i am belogan with me is force path hello and augie hi i'm here so we're just going to kind of go through the questions that we have that we haven't answered in the past, or we have the appropriate person here to answer. And uh, I'll kick it off. We had a question come in from Enton specifically for me asking, will Chloe ever be on the podcast? And my answer to that is yes, Chloe will be on the podcast. In fact, Chloe has been on the podcast. In fact, more than once. Yeah. She's Chloe's been, been on two on or three times. To clear spotlight done with Augie and with, uh, with a round table item round table. So, Go back and check out the old episodes. They have been updated in their names to say who's featured in each of them. So they're a little bit easier to navigate now. Uh, shout out to the player who recommended I do that. Sorry, I can't remember who that was. But Chloe has been on the podcast. All right. Uh, Force Path, you're up. Sure. Uh, it question. looks like there's a question here for from uh, Omnistrats. My goodness, that's an old name. Um, who asks, uh, what would you change about the Code of Conduct if you owned? That's a really big question. And my understanding is the code of conduct has changed. Uh, so I took my break and come back. So it, probably a little bit short sighted of me. Um, I think the biggest thing that I would consider changing is finding a way to really call out and let people know how much we don't want bad actors. Um, just keeping the community full of fun and joy. Um, obviously, there's. It's not always going to be perfect, um, but I really wish I really wish there's a more generic way to do that, that people understood that we want. Uh, we don't really need the, the anger and negativity. Um, sorry, it's kind of a generic answer, but it's a pretty it's a pretty big question. It is a big question. All right. Awesome. Uh, Augie, you're up. All right. This question is you said that you already tra- kind of answered this one. The. The. Jill one, one of the Jill ones. There's a lot of Jill questions. I'll take a, I'll take a second crack at it. It's from PCAT one who asks, why did Jill decide to become a farmer? Um, I believe I answered it in the quest um, that she's just her, like she, her family, you know, she grew up around farmers. Everybody was a farmer and it's just kind of what her, fa- her family name does. Like they're known as farmers and, so that's why, um, but she never has had a green bell and she actually really hates it. Awesome. There we go. All right. Highlight, uh, I'm, I'm highlighting. Uh, I'm going to take a crack. Appreciate that. I'm going to take a crack at this question. It was actually asked for milk bark by the G dubs man. <laughs> I, 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 I love this question. Question simply is how dare you? I will just say, I think he dares. He does. That's just, he does just dare. Milk bark. He dares to do what? What are you gonna do about it, right? That All right, like I took a, a pretty, took an easy one. Seems like a pretty fair answer to me. Um, sure, I'll pop a question here. Uh, Squirticus um, asks the help request authors, uh, "How do you feel about eating corn the long way?" I was hoping you'd that, that one. Say, <laughs> What's that? I was hoping you were going to pick that one. 
let's let's just say that's the only way to eat corn. If you're if you're going around the cob, what are you doing? I mean, I've seen people do that before, and it just it strikes me as wrong. I'm, the long way is the only way, and I will die on this hill. It's my turn, and I'm looking at the. I'm looking at the questions, and the one I just looked at, I do not want to answer. I do not want to answer the one on line 13. <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to pick a different one. Um, it's fine. How about you? How about you go with 17? That one was for you. That one is for me. <laughs> Cole. <laughs> this one is from Cole MTG, otherwise known as Kakusho in D&D on the Farm RPG. It says... As a responsible wheel spinner, what other uses of ancient coins would you like added to the game? Or what changes would you like done to the wheel to entice others to spin as fervent? I can't read fervently. My vocabulary, not good. Thank you. As that word, as you do. Um, I've So I regularly make, you know, sometimes subtle and sometimes not subtle comments about things I personally would like to see done to the wheel. Um, Firestream has added at least one of those things to his never ending list, which is really exciting. I don't want to say what it is in case, you know, spoilers, but um, I would like to see another random slot on the wheel because that's my favorite one to get because it could be stone or it could be, rubber duckies i haven't gotten rubber duckies actually but i've gotten like the mug of beer which is a new one gold feathers are now on the wheel under random um as far as other things to spend them on like it's just the wheel for me there's nothing else it's just the wheel i got you got i also no though no, I need to call out Force Path right now immediately. I need to this is oh, no. this is a public call out. 67 wheel spins. I called you out this morning. I think you had 63. You've spun four yeah, times. Yeah, I only had 63. So what's up? You've spun four times this whole day since I called you out. You don't even have a hundred spins. It is so irresponsible. Have wait, have you seen have you even seen the page? I don't think you uh, I don't know. Hold on. About how to talk to your moderators about yeah. possible wheel spins. Oh, yeah. I have seen that page. I just posted it in spoilers in case you need another a reminder. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. I promise I, the, to click on that link someday. The the gif in the spoiler tab is oh, I made it myself. I like deep fried it in a bunch of filters. Nice. Yeah. I do appreciate the reminder to spin the wheel. I've got the next question. This one comes from EJS87 for anyone. Question is, do you know the Muffin Man? The Muffin Man? The Muffin Man. Yes, I know the Muffin Man. Who lives on Drury Lane? Well, she's married to the Muffin Man. The Muffin Man? She's married to the Muffin Man. She's married to the Muffin Man. I actually looked it up. And it's one of the it's one of Cinderella's stepsisters that's married to the Muffin Man. <laughs> Good to know. Yeah, we well, we were in chat. Like I I was I was, you know, I was advertising, sending questions, and he actually sent like said it in chat and it was a whole thing. And then so I had to look it up. Just like I had to look up um Force Pets random username book from the 90s and just needed to know <laughs> i will Wait, find obscure information on the internet do not do not think i won't i will all right i will i'll quit taking the easy ones after this we're on to force path oh um well i'm probably the most adept at lore questions at this point but not even at augie's level these days uh we'll do we'll do uh nox eternus who i have seen in chat a number of times talking about jail um why does jill want so much corn what does she do with it is there an ancient corn god she is worshiping as well as is captain thomas actually from another world it was actually like four questions three questions um we'll uh we'll tackle these in a year of course welcome to correct me i will 
fairly because important. you haven't you haven't finished. You're not caught up yet. I don't think I've read Where? them at this point. Did you? So, um, but I'm only going to answer the only quest that matters at the current time to me. And that's uh, where Knox is at. So Knox is in the first corn jail. Uh, so he's on corn quandary. And the question I would ask you, Knox, is does she really want all this corn? I'm not so sure. Did you actually collect all this corn or was it just a dream? I'll let you think about that one. Um, beyond that, uh, is there an ancient corn god she's worshipping? As far as I know, uh, no. Uh, I mean, who knows? Is- maybe. I don't know. I mean, I mean in a not- way, in a way, maybe, <laughs> but maybe not. Like uh, life is life is complicated. Yeah. And then uh, is Captain Thomas actually from another world? I love this question. I have I only recently discovered how much people love Captain Thomas. Uh, who was introduced in the Poseidon quest chain. Um, I would tell you to read and find out because you're going to find out fairly soon as far as I understand. Soon, Um, TM. Captain Thomas is mained. Uh, He's mostly written by Tenfu, who is a extremely amazing plot writer. Um, he, he, uh, He comes up with ideas that I'm always blown away by. Uh, so... What I can tell you is uh, you will get there and you will find out um, and there's more to come. Uh, it was being discussed today, actually. So it was really cool. So uh, a lot of vagaries there, but uh, I've always been one for vagaries. I don't like spoilers. I think that's why they call me spoiler path. I will. I will stick by my claim, quoting Firestream, that Jill is a scammer. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I miss corn quandry. Writing those songs was a joy. This, uh, I think that knocks out another question. It's basically the same. Yeah. <laughs> we'll just, we'll just color it in so we don't hit it up. That question sure. is from everyone. From everyone. Protagonist in the TV show Elementary. Um, the, these two questions are kind of specifically for, I think, Firestream. So we'll just leave them for now. I did. He did. I did ask him if he'd do another podcast at some point, and he said that he would. So that's to be to yeah, be we'll determined. Want to get at some point? Yes. Um, I mean, I could. I could take a. I could take a. <laughs> I could take a crack at this one, but you're gonna have to edit 14. in. Yeah, you're gonna have to. You're gonna have to edit there, in something. There, there, there is an official response to this that we have clarified on the podcast, but not. From not f- not from the man himself. He has uh, never denied it, so we will we will take that. <laughs> well, then I'll ask and you answer. How about that? Okay. So this question is from Y I N, and it says, "How do you pronounce your username?" And it is specifically for the user whose username is F F F F. The answer is it's a flat tire. Any other answer is, is simply wrong. End but story. I mean, I still say fa 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 or f f f. I've always That's, called him. It, it's okay that you're wrong, Augie. It's all right. I, I've always called him f or like the wind. So, right. Almost like blowing a bubble. Or her. But... I don't think he's ever or she has ever used that. So did that did that count as my question or your question, Augie? Um, that can that will have counted as my question because I asked it. All right. All right. Awesome. Um, we had, as we were speaking, a question come in from Goose Gang. I'm going to veto the first question he sent in and say we're not going to answer that, but I will take a crack at the second one. And he asks, why do they call a poodle and a golden retriever mix a golden doodle when it should be called a poo retriever? And the answer to that one is simple. It's all a marketing ploy. What's going to get the most money? Obviously, the golden noodle, right? It sounds it that's, sounds that's it. more yes. And as a as a proud owner of a poodle, I will just say why people stop doing this. It's not good. We have enough mongrels and giving them fancy names doesn't change the fact that they're not a purebred dog. You're just creating new dogs with lots of problems. All right, there's my rant. Thanks, Goose King. Well, uh some of these are way out there. Uh I'll go ahead and uh Go ahead and nab. <laughs> you just <laughs> made it red. 
I don't know the answer to t- to eight or to twenty, so I'm gonna make one of you two answer that because it's been a long time. Uh, Rambun asks, "Has you have you guys thought of adding a new drink, new item involving exploring or fishing?" Uh, and they say in all caps, "I say eggnog." Um, and to that, I say you've seen Firestream add a number of juices. Uh, lemonade wasn't necessarily in the game at first. Lemonade was a problem. Uh, because people were spamming so many clicks, it was killing the server. Uh, so lemonade was introduced, and uh, I recall um, apple cider was introduced as November, well. And obviously, we have Arnold Palmer's. You know, um, and Firestream is always iterating on his design, trying to find interesting questions to answer. I mean, iced tea was never a thing until I don't remember. Until it was, um, but that definitely. Uh, yeah, I mean, an iced tea wasn't craftable. You would only get it from quests. Uh, so I would say I'm sure that there are ideas floating about for a new drink or a new item. Um, part of the coolness of Farm RPG is always evolving, always developing. So um, either submit something on feedback um, or, you know, just uh, throw something in that they're global and really rile people up. That's always a fun, fun time. So don't, r- don't um, roll people yeah. up, please. <laughs> <laughs> Unless so, Force anyways, Path is in yeah. chat. Mm, well. <laughs> so yeah, I mean the answer to your question is absolutely. And I'm I'm confident more will come. We also have peaches and peach juice. Oh it's yeah. I mean thing. I know about it. I haven't used it a whole lot since I came back. So um rip pe- peaches. So we've got we've got one last question we're gonna all you take a swing at. So this question is from Suicide Pepe. It says oh my goodness. It says, Hello, first of all, thanks for the game. I was wondering if there's any way to see how much orange juice, lemonade, or other drinks I've used. Thanks. So the short answer to this is no. However, if you I mean To see how much you've used, no. But if you go, you know, you can check your item mastery to see how much you've, you know, at least crafted slash obtained from quests. It won't count through trading. Um, But, I mean, that is one way. You can also check, you know, your explore count as far as, you know, with the orange, you see how much stamina you've used. Otherwise, if you have a daily chore to use or juice or lemonade and you just don't collect it till the end of the day, you can check that way for that day. I don't think I would want to know how much I use. I think I would be a little upset. It's been a lot. I'm sure. It hasn't not been a lot. I feel like we could probably answer the first half of this, the question that's that got Number 13. Oh, that's a long question. Let's see if I can even read it. I can so read this it. This one is one that came in from Wizad. It says, What kind of technology stack is Farm RPG built on that allows it to handle so many actions so incredibly well? If there's 1,500 plus people, oh, I, meant the, I meant the 13. Simultaneously spamming things like large nets. <laughs> oh. Oh, 13. Oh, I was I, looking at this one. <laughs> no, that one is like a fire stream question, I think, unless you can answer it. I, as far as what it's built on, we can talk about that a little bit. Uh, in Titan Conquest, Firestream actually answers this question about the game. It's built yep. primarily with PHP, MySQL, HTML, JavaScript, CSS, and then the actual user interface is made with Framework 7. Correct. He yeah. has a server that that runs on. It is always going through optimization and things and fixes. Um, actually, Code Ranger has been really helpful, I think, on, on the back end with helping to optimize a lot of that lately. Tenfu does some of that work as well. And... Um, yeah, it all kind of runs on one server, but when everybody's spamming large nets, like when we have an event, like it's been the last two days, you do fill it and things do lag out a bit. So there's my uh, there's my crack at that one. Really, that was for Firestream, but we we kind of know the answer from Firestream himself. Elegan talks good. When uh, when fire when I came back and I was talking with Firestream a little bit uh, last week and earlier this week, uh, the first thing he had mentioned is you know how much much optimization he'd done in the game since I'd left and some of the help he was getting and how he just never really experienced lag anymore. 
And then the event comes out, and the first thing that happens is the experience lag. So I, I had to I had to message him and, and really rib him about that one. That was uh, that was pretty funny. Uh, just kind of the irony of that. I will say, I think the second question that was had asked really probably plays more into the quest writing than than uh, the game build and design from Firestream. I could the, probably take a crack at it. All right, I'll read it. Share. How about we share, Augie? Yeah, I'll, we can I'll share. You two take a crack at answering at it. Okay. It says, the way you guys have built the progression in the game is I am oh brilliant. I love how different items sort of fade in and out of the spotlight, except for corn. Corn is life, which is corn true. Is That's As true. Game levels, you find yourself with new challenges like tower masteries. Those moments when you go, oh wow, suddenly horseshoes are important in my progression again. Are so simple but re-engaging. How has your approach to designing this mechanism that keeps us playing changed over the years? How do you manage to make it all mesh so well? Um, the answer I think is teamwork. Is the short answer. Too. Mm-hmm. Yes. I mean, we've had we've been extremely lucky with some of the moderators we've had over over periods of time who have offered tons of balance insight. Um, you know, the quest writers. I remember Bell was kind of the first person to say, "What if I asked people for hundred plus apples? What would happen?" Uh, that it was, was three hundred and sixty five. Yeah, there we go. Um, <laughs> and everyone's like, "No, we can't have more than two hundred because that's your starting inventory." <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, that was uh, that was the spark for me that kind of said, you know, what about like quests that would add another engaging level to what Farm RPG does? Because eventually we'll hit all 99s and then what are you going to do? And it's just sort of been uh, bouncing ideas off of various moderators, team members, you know, the feedback page. And I think I think, you know, Titan Con- Conquest was a great starter for that. You know, some of the concepts that exist in Farm RPG are Titan Conquest driven. Um, but some of them are just things that Firestream, you know, sometimes you, inspiration strikes and it works out really well. And then we have the rep, the RFC. RFC. Don't talk about it. That's the first rule. <clears throat> Sorry, that's uh, not something that I can speak to. That's, but that's it's just, it's just, answer. yeah, but it's just one of the, one of those, you know, ins- random inspiring ideas that he had. But we I won't talk when, about uh, it. When Corn Jail, when Corn Jail came out. Everyone when you pr- it, you but... well you you invented corn jail like you were the, the did, sole yes. creator yes and then I was I was and sitting the there and purpose I was just thinking like that I need to justify it in some way I need to like wrap it around and people will it'll still be corn jail but I need to make it make sense in my brain in some way mm. it took a long time. But... <laughs> I needed to justify it. Corn jail. The whole purpose of corn jail was uh, bad luck protection. So it was something I, I'd been moderately critical of in the game up to that point was, you know, you could farm, you could, you could master corn and not get a runestone 11. And that was, um, that was required to get to Ember Lagoon. And it was, it was just a huge block for people at the time. And I said, you know, what if, by the time, I don't remember how many corner requests now, 6,500, 7,500, you know, what if there's a hard stop where you're just going to get RS11 because there's so much more to the game than just every day coming in, growing corn, and not being able to do anything until you get that runestone 11. So that was the that was the initial purpose of Corn Jail, um, was, to, was to really keep players from hitting that, man, I've been growing corn for... And the game has changed a ton since since that quest was introduced but you know i think i think every team member has had ideas like that just something where they're like this is problematic and how can we solve it through an item or a quest or a mechanic and uh firestream is really great at taking user feedback and and you know sieving through that and saying what's what what works for my game and what's probably not such a good idea yeah like with you know the repurposing of apple cider for using it to burn through a lot of stamina once, you know, players needed more stamina because, you know, at, at higher level, you know, especially with masteries, like you just, you do. So the orchard, you know, the orchard sizes grew and then people were sitting there with so they, you know, manual clicking took forever. And now with ciders and even with large nets and Arnold Palmer's, it just continues to be able, you know, the game, like as you get later and later in the game, 
certain things are easier to do. So the quest writers, you know, work to be- keep that in balance and the quest will progressively get, I don't want to say like more challenging. Nothing in the game inherently is challenging aside from, I would say growing, growing peppers for a long period of time and like manual fishing for more than 30 seconds for me personally. Um, but just to keep it, you know, something that not everybody will instantly be able to finish as everything continues to grow. And then corn, I mean, corn, you're in corn jail forever now, like force path and invented and created and, you know, molded it. And then I needed to justify it and it's never going away. It's grown from that. I just remember, I just remember releasing corn jail right around the same time that parts unknown came out. And people got all the way to the ends of Parts Unknown and had no idea there was corn at the end of Parts Unknown. And that was, uh, that was frankly part of my more malicious enjoyment is seeing chat explode in despair when they're like, but one more thing and I didn't plan for it. Uh, that is a, it's a really fun, it's a really fun experience. I remember when that came out and it was before the pet lemur. <laughs> it was, yeah. Bug, bug jail. I bug, remember the when bug uh, jail when it so when you when you could make a killing with bugs for orange juice and trade yeah, chat. People were trading, uh, you know, five orange juice for a caterpillar. <laughs> no, no, it was the horn. It was the horn beetles were like ten to one, ten orange juice for one. I remember oh my that. Goodness, yeah, and I remember, I, I remember that. And the shiny so bombed. I remember. Oh. I remember camping small cave to get the grab bags that had the beat. Cause I would just, I had good luck. I had good RNG with the Beatles and I was like, I'm going to keep doing this for a little while. And I did. And then I think I actually spent gold in the flea market on for some of the gold, fe- gold leaves. So because they wouldn't drop, they wouldn't drop for me. They wouldn't drop. Oh, and I man. was, I was getting was- irritated. Um, I just I just remember not realizing that bugs were tradable when designing that quest. And I remember when tr- when the first player that got there, and I believe that was Null, got there and he started trading at absolute basement prices for bugs because no one else had gotten there and knew what he was up to. Um, and watching that market evolve over the next 48 hours was truly fascinating. Yeah. I think, and I remember your frustration with that. And I think since then it's made all of us more cognizant of like what's mailable, like period. And I mean, but since then, you know, like even just recently with the townsfolk friendship, more items have become mailable, which is a, you know, that's not a bad thing. We want, you know, certain, I, 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 I got end game, you know, let, yeah, let someone mail someone red dye because I'm always voiding it. I'm voiding the feather in it. Because I've already grandmastered the things. Anything you want, maybe we'll see. But <laughs> um, I don't know. Like, so have you actually read through like the the Junlin quests? Like, do you know what happens? Yeah. Are you mm-hmm, for sure. okay? Um. I so know, I'm cheating, but uh, I'm I allowed. mean, you're you're allowed to. You have the buttons to press to be able to read it. Um. So the. The, Le- the Langstaff crest as mm. the fun- <laughs> I that honestly I think that might have been Tenfu's idea and it was just it was so funny and then but the cor- uh, the corn oil was my idea and I talk about it in a previous podcast where originally I wanted it to be like way harder to make and I wanted I wanted like a little bit more of a challenge but you know, I I am devastatingly evil when I want something to be challenging. So it was toned back a little bit. But the cor- I love corn oil. I'm so I'm so happy about corn oil. Corn gel never ends. Well, I will I will jump in and say thank you, Wizad, for that question that has uh, prompted a lot of great reminiscing. And good discussion. I will reminisce all day. I will also. <laughs> I know we could. I know we could, but I think sorry, it's sorry, probably sorry. time to, to wrap this up. It's Belgian's bedtime. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> we'll put in one more plug, send mm-hmm. those questions in, and uh, we'll get together and take a crack at it again. Uh, for now, thanks for sending those in. Bye. Bye. Bye.